on. Great. So, um, so nice to see everyone trickling in. Um, welcome to our uh, second part of our three part MATLAB lecture series. Um, so um, for those of you just um, joining in, um, or for those of you who attended um, last week or one of our earlier meetings, um, this meeting is going to be recorded and so it'll be available online a few days um, after the meeting. I'll, I'll share a link on where you can access that uh, if you're interested in sharing with others. Um, and as you probably noticed already, um, as you've joined the room, you're automatically uh, muted and your video is turned off, but feel free to um, unmute yourself or turn your video on when you have um, a question to ask. And um, Jungri, you indicated last time that you were okay with people just interjecting. Is that yeah. true today? Mm -hmm. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, so feel free to just, if you have a question, jump in right away. Or if you'd like to save it to the end of the talk, that's fine too. Um, we can kind of cover those at that point. Um, and so for those of you who um, don't know Jean Gris, um, he is the OSU CCBBI Facility Specialist, um, aka a jack of all trades for our center. And he received his PhD in neuroscience from USTC China and has it been um, at Ohio State for over nine years. So um, please join me in welcoming uh, Dr. Jean Gris Lee and uh, I'll let you take it over from here. Thank you, Alison. So welcome everyone. So it seems that like we have a lot of people uh, 29 so far. And uh, the second part of the MATLAB series, uh, the seminar series, I'm going to talk about the stimulus pre presentation using Cycle tool Toolbox. So uh, uh, this is a kind of, a, uh, I, I believe there are a lot of online tutorials for this kind of thing, but uh, my major emphasis today is an example, not a basic cycle toolbox. Cycle toolbox is a very powerful tool, and uh, uh, I think we can take a lot of time to talk about it, but that's not what I'm going to do today. I'm going to do today mainly as an example. So as I talked, I mentioned last time, if you don't have a lot of uh, uh, MATLAB experience, don't be scared. If you start with the demo ex the example code, and you know what you are doing, make some change gradually, uh, little by little, then it will fit your experiment. That's all we need. We don't want to be an expert on programming. We want to get our work done, right? So here I'm gonna briefly mention a couple of the softwares. So uh, Cycle Toolbox uh, in, under MATLAB or Octave is one of them. So this kind of like E prime, I think a presentation, cotton, these are some uh, uh, commercial software. They uh, are nice in terms of uh, the user interface. Uh, that's one major reason people use it. A lot of people, if they don't have a, a coding experience, they like some user interface, you can, it's easy to start with. And while the uh, CyclePy and uh, under Python and Cycle Toolbox, they kind of, uh, they are still developing some uh, user interface, but their interface are not that, even as of it was not, not that great as the pre, uh, those commercial software. And uh, for now, I don't think Cycle Toolbox any GUI. CyclePy has a little bit. So that means it requires a little bit of coding skill, but my whole point today I'm going to show you is uh, no GUI, no problem. So we hope I can achieve that. So you will believe me uh, uh, after the presentation. So uh, Cycle Toolbox is a pretty good at a seamless timing. Actually, the developer emphasized that a lot. Although you know, our pur for our purpose for the FMR experiment, that's 99% of the time, that's not critical because our signal is uh, too slow. We get a one data point, like a one second or two seconds. So uh, something like a 10, 20 milliseconds, uh, stimulus uh, 12, 15 or even 100 milliseconds, stimulus uh, uh, timing problems. And, Normally we don't care, but for EEG that that, that may be a, maybe a huge problem. Uh, but because of the strict timing requirement, 
uh, Cycle Toolbox has a very picky requirement for some hardware. Uh, but there, there are some ways to turn that, those off. But, but uh, even if we are not that picky, it won't hurt to get good stimulus timing. So the hardware requirement is uh, uh, not necessarily for a high-end computer, but most of times, so majorly, it's the, uh, a better graphics card. Uh, and it, in case you want high uh, time acquisition sound play, you will have a better sound card. Um, but uh, again, uh, for FMR experiment, none of them is critical, and any hardware should work with uh, some trick. Uh, 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 for the Cycle tool, Toolbox. In terms of operating system, the developer of Cycle Toolbox prefer Linux, uh, but it's uh, uh, most people don't use Linux, also it, although it is free. So the, the next one is Windows. That's why our uh, stimulus computer in the control room is set up in Windows. And we did set up a Linux as a second uh, stimulus computer, but over the years, no one ever used it. So they use, either use our Windows computer they, or they bring them their own uh, laptop as either Windows or Mac. In old days, Cycle Toolbox was a develop, particularly developed for Mac, Apple hardware. So it worked only for app, uh, now Apple. Now it support all the hardwares, but now the, according to the uh, Cycle Toolbox developer, uh, Apple hardware is the worst one for stimulus timing. So, but I know still a lot of people, I guess it's for historical reason, they, they still stick with the uh, Mac uh, laptop. So, uh, but I think we, we should, uh, that's not kind of necessary. Windows is pretty uh, workable, especially for our purpose. So, uh, Anyway, this is not critical. This is already critical if you are doing some EEG study. That's the hardware you need to choose carefully. But for fMRI, pretty much any, uh, any of these operating systems, any hardware works fine. And uh, the tricky thing is this is a response device. And for, our, for us, because the button needed to be in the MRI scanner, it should be MRI compatible. Uh, but when, once we connect the fiber optical to, to the hardware, that part we can use any kind of hardware in the control room. So if, in, in case you need a very accurate response time, we have an RT box hooked to the, our uh, system. So maybe most people don't know that they because uh, only, I think only till today, only two groups use that. And uh, because of the, uh, we don't care about too much about the response time accuracy. But if you do, that's an option. You, you can simply use it by changing a little bit into your stimulus code. Most people use the keyboard. So we convert the, uh, even convert the MRI scanner trigger into a key press that's a number five. That's most people are using. So it should be good enough. The accuracy should be good enough for most experiments. And uh, uh, for our uh, uh, response system, although it's a general USB keyboard, but it's, uh, there's a special treatment for that one. That's called so-called a fake release mode, or call, uh, they, they use some other terminology. That means, so uh, when we, uh, if, uh, for a regular keyboard, if we press button A uh, in, a, in a notepad, you will see, a type A appears there. If you hold the button, hold the key, A key, hold it there, after uh, about half a second, you will see a, 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 a string of A in the, appear in the window. So that be a, could be a disaster for the response. If the subject pressed a, a button without releasing, you, we are in next trial, oh, he, he pressed the button one again. Actually, no, he didn't release it quickly. So for that concern, uh, our response is designed in such a way. So if subject press the button one, even if he's still hold the button one, we, the hardware quickly re respond to the system. See, button is released, that's a fake release. So even if the participant hold the button, it won't generate multiple uh, response until he released the button and press again. So uh, actually from our fiber optical response pattern, 
that's a problem. So that's why in our system, I modified into my own USB keyboard. You don't have, you don't need to know the detail about that because it simply worked for you. So no worry for that. So uh, here is the major part for the for my demo demo code today. So uh, the, here, uh, before we uh, uh, go to the demo code, let me mention a couple of tips uh, and the tricks to uh, when we program the stimulus using cycle toolbox. So you don't have to do that way, but it's always good to make our code uh, 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 operating system and a computer independent. And then when, when we copy code from one computer to another one, we hope it will work without any modification. That will be the best. So actually that, that in MATLAB or Octave, that should be straightforward as long as we pay a little bit of attention to that. So for example, uh, file path, we know in Windows is something, something like a C, colon, backslash. So try to avoid that. So we, we tried, my stress is to use a relative path. For example, if uh, uh, your code stays in a certain directory, we will save our result into the sub subdirectory under that folder. That, that means the relative directory. We uh, try to avoid use the absolute directory that will work because for different computers, the uh, absolute directory start with a different uh, characters. So for example, current directory dot slash behave that means we will use uh, relative to the current directory. And the path separator, always use the, uh, this is a slash or backslash, this is a slash, right? And uh, always use this one. You, the, this is uh, for Mac and Linux, uh, but it also works perfectly for Windows under MATLAB. So we always use this one, so we won't bother. Oh, it's Windows. Uh, when we change to Windows to, we, uh, or to Mac, we need to change that now. Uh, stick with this one. And the other one says, uh, la actually I mentioned last time, whenever possible, use a function. Use a script only when absolutely necessary, but there, that's very rare. So we will, uh, 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 I'm going to show you a rare case to use a, a script, but it's not necessary. And the other trick, I think if you have ever programmed inside the uh, cycle toolbox, uh, if you, you often have a dead screen, we open a screen to show stimulus, our code has an error, then a black screen there. And uh, some people like uh, in Mac, they will have command zero, break compute, break MATLAB command window into front, then type SCA, SCA screen close off, oh, it's kind of tricky. So in Windows, they will uh, control auto delete to start the task uh, manager and the key on my lab. That's kind of rude and it's time consuming. Uh, there are actually, there are much better way to do that. You are, I guess most of you, if you ever used that, you know, the suggestions used to try catch you, we run the code in try part. If it runs into error, any error, it will execute the catch part. In the catch part, we can close our screen safely. But in new MATLAB, since something like a 2013 or, or even earlier, there's a much better way you will see in the demo code today. That's called on clean up object. This, we registered uh, screen close A close all to this object, assign that to a variable. And if we do this in a function, when there is an error, it will automatically close the window for you because it will call this function automatically. And the benefit is uh, uh, we know after experiment, we will close the window because we are done. In this case, you do this, you don't need to close the window. When the experiment finished, it will automatically call this close for you. So you just do what this line, you will take care of window close and error, uh, the, avoid the, the black screen in case of error. The other minor trick is uh, when you uh, run experiment, don't open the MATLAB uh, editor, uh, mainly because our scanner will press five, 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 five. Once you accidentally bring the uh, editor window as the top window, 
that file will erase your code. That's not nice. So always start to start some command from command window. Uh, don't open my, uh, editor or hide them editor. Uh, don't make it a, a front window. Uh, front window. Uh, the last uh, trick is I uh, keep uh, emphasizing whenever I have a chance. So the, you, it's the absolute time for each trial, for the start of a trial. And uh, we will see this in, the, uh, in our demo code. So uh, the, uh, with the demo, well, before we get to the demo code, they, I'm going to uh, introduce uh, one of my work recently. I, uh, there's a, a code to uh, deal with the response for the, mainly for the uh, MRI, exper MRI experiment, but it can also be used for behavioral experiment. So before that, uh, let's uh, review quickly review a couple of the uh, functions used in a uh, cycle toolbox to collect the response. Uh, in old days, maybe some people you are familiar with get char. Uh, that's obsolete. Try best to avoid it if you can. Actually, uh, I think uh, it's rarely used. I think the, it's a state in a cycle toolbox that mainly for backward compatibility issue. It's really no good reason to use that. And there's a lot of good reason to avoid it. And most people I think use KB check. And that was uh, the nice thing about KB check is uh, it read the current state of the keyboard. So, and it bypassed the operating system. So that's why it has a very good timing. Uh, but because it only check the current state of the keyboard, it's in the polling mode. So uh, why is it called a poll? If we run the function, we are checking if currently any key is pressed. So then if, if you press a key, it releases, uh, we are not running KB check, then we'll miss it. So, so that's why we need to keep polling frequently so we won't miss anything. Actually, that's a problem for the uh, auto release mode. I mentioned early because it press quickly release KB check will miss a lot of a function, a lot of key response. And uh, uh, the advantage of a KB check is easy to access multiple keyboard. KB check minus one, if you ever use MATLAB, uh, cycle toolbox, you always use that. That will read keyboard from all, uh, response from all keyboard. Because in our case, we want detect response from the uh, experimenter's keyboard but more importantly from the keyboard, the participant is pressing inside the scanner. So that's uh, two key different keyboards. So that's very convenient, convenient. But I guess maybe some people use this series of function like a KP, KPQ uh, series, like a lot of KPQ start, Q, uh, uh, create, start, a lot of things, or KP event series of function. But I guess people rarely use that because mainly because it's, a, it's syntax is not user friendly. But in somehow the major difference from KB check is it buffering the response. That means if you call the function, if there was a response a second ago, it's still in the buffer. You can still get it. That's good or bad, depending on what, what we want to do. It could be very good because it won't miss a response. Could it be bad? you read an old response, fake, fake one. So the, that's why we need to, if we use, choose use any of this, we should choose based on what we need. And the, the major problem for this function series, it read only one keyboard under uh, OS 10 and Linux. For Windows, I want to be able to distinguish different keyboards, but it turns out that's a poor feature, but that's a great advantage for us. So for uh, OS 10 Linux, we have to do some trick to make it work to choose the correct uh, keyboard to get the response. Uh, here's the, the two example code I uh, uh, copy paste from the uh, Cycle Toolbox website. In this case, we are polling using the uh, KB check. KB check minus one on that with all keyboard, the, a while loop, while and while loop. So if the response is made, okay, we stop. Or if 
uh, the time step reached the uh, our end time, that's three seconds after from now, we stop even there's no response. That's often the case. Uh, we often have a missed response. We will keep going with one forever for the participant to press the key. We will skip to next try. So we read the key first, we check the key. Ah, oh, if the user pressed the escape key, ah, oh, now we close off. Uh, we want to stop. That's a good feature. You don't have to have this, but it's very nice for developers, for, for us who, who are writing the code. If the left key, that's my uh, key of interest or right key, we'll get, ah, oh, that's response one, that's response two. Make sure, oh, we know response has been done. So we change it that it's too fast. So when we go back to here, it won't read again. Then some kind of a randomly wait five milliseconds. This is not absolutely necessary, but it's good to have because try to avoid overhead, uh, uh, overhead the CPU. If you don't have this line on some computer, it could be bad. But the problem is uh, what's the interval we want to wait? Uh, probably it's kind of a five milliseconds is, is some compromise. That means if you wait 10 milliseconds, your response accuracy won't be able, won't be better than 10 milliseconds. So that's the restriction uh, we, uh, we have to live with that. Look, that's cause, that's the polling. The other one is the use the buffering. So the, look, the, it, here are the uh, key we are interested for error keys. This key, we will stop a, uh, the experiment. That's the function. Then start, create, start. Here, the, uh, I want to emphasize the difference, different trials. Before we start the, uh, immediately after we show the uh, stimulus on, we need to flush the buffer. Why? Because the response buffer, in case response, uh, participant press a key, in the previous trial, we don't want to treat that as a response for our current trial. That's why this one is necessary to, to flush the buffer. So we are interested in response only after this. So again, here, uh, in this example, wait for five seconds. So until it reached this time, here's a, uh, going to read the, uh, check the buffer, uh, another loop like polling, but it's a, we are reading from buffer. So if the is, uh, escape key press, we stop, error out. If uh, the, uh, the response index like here, we, uh, we found it is not empty key, that means long of this key uh, were pressed, then we break. We will uh, here, we'll find out which key is that. Here's uh, the response time here. Look, here's a 40 millisecond. That's terrible, right? No, it doesn't matter. Be why? Because the response is a buffer. So even you wait a 100 millisecond, won't miss, that, miss any response. That's why here the interval is not critical. Okay, so those are examples. It looks so complicated. You don't need to worry about it. Because I recently, uh, uh, I think last month or two months ago, I started to uh, develop this uh, key code, this code for collect response. It's an object oriented, uh, a single file, single file works forever. You don't need to rely on anything other, except the second two bus functions. Uh, like the namespace is a less issue because a single file. And it supports both polling and buffering. So whenever, which one you, you need, you, you can, it works for you. And for Mac and uh, Linux, it will, most of the time, it will select the automatic, uh, uh, correct keyboard automatically for you. So you don't need to worry about it. the first one, second one for Windows, it, it, we read all, it automatically read all of them. And always auto, uh, uh, automatic detect escape pressing, like the previous one, like here. We also, if escape pressed, or oh, we error out, stop. So this key, uh, this function always do that for you. So you don't have to do that in your loop. Actually, in your experiment, you never say loop again to read the keyboard. It's a single line. 
So for example, uh, like the buffer the response, we, this is a function outside the loop to start. Within a loop, after the stimulus, if the buffered, you will do this, that's the keyboard. And uh, clear, that's clear the previous possible response, every possible response pre from previous trials. Then if you want to turn on the stimulus, that's fine. It's your optionally you can do that. Uh, this will wait until the, until the, this time to turn off the stimulus. Because it's a buffered, we don't need to worry about, oh, if sub, what happens if a subject make a key response before we turn off the stimulus? No worry, because the response is buffered. And then we simply seconds, that's a get sex uh, time step, keys, which keys pressed, read it up to three seconds. So basically this single line re uh, replace some, somewhere from here to here. Replace all of this. It does exactly those things. That's for the buffering part. For the uh, polling part, there's another uh, method called a weight. And uh, that's, that's very useful. We will see, also see that in our, in our demo code. So I strongly recommend you use this. That's, a, that's included in the utilities I sent you early. So uh, you can use it for free. You don't need to pay me anything. Uh, I believe you will definitely like it because as you can see how simple it is. Uh, so this one is equivalent to this one. Uh, th uh, this is not necessary if we do the polling. But if we do buffering, that's uh, critical. Okay, uh, we all know uh, for a different experiment, we have different design, I have more experiment, we have different design, the code will be slightly different. And uh, for today's purpose, we are doing a demo for popular event related design. And uh, oftentimes we do the uh, jittering. We, we, uh, we uh, randomized the uh, trial types, uh, then to a jitter, either by a now trial or a different uh, interval, a jitter interval. And mixed design is kind of a mix both block design and event related design. Although the demo is a event related design, it should be easy to adapt into a block design. Okay, here we are going to move to the demo code. I'm going to, uh, when we go through the code, I'm, we will uh, touch the concept we, uh, some concept we mentioned earlier. So, uh, uh, where's my lab? Okay. So here's the code I sent to you that's, uh, uh, I wrote a demo code. So it's kind of a little bit long, but I wrote a lot of comments in that, so it could be helpful. But without those comments, it could be something like uh, 80 lines. It's, it's uh, not that terrible. So uh, uh, the first thing is uh, the demo code returns the wrong length in seconds. Uh, typically, the experiment won't return anything. It just saves the result. But here it returns a result. Uh, where, where was that? Yeah, here. And uh, I'm going to compute how long the experiment will run and return. So if you are in a control room, I may ask you, how long is your run? So we can set the scanner how many uh, measurements we want to do. So then if you use temp this template, what you, you need to do is uh, use the function name. Tell me, okay. The uh, number of measurements equal to that, actually that's number of seconds, divided by TR. If my our TR is one, oh, oops, change the current co uh, code to the current directory. Here it is. Okay, that you tell me, oh, I need to run 344 measurements. If your TR is set two seconds, your second, this return second divided by two, it will give you, uh, you will tell me, oh, I need to run 172 seconds. That's a feature. You don't have to have this, but I think it's nice, right? Okay, uh, here, uh, uh, let's uh, go through, quickly go uh, through something. 
there is some parameter for the stimulus that is specifically for this stimulus. It's not critical if you use pictures that's not necessary. So uh, here's, uh, any question? Yeah, uh, kick, uh, feel free to interrupt anytime if you have a question. So here are some uh, uh, timing parameter uh, for, the uh, for, uh, I, uh, for the experiment. I call the stimulus duration 200 millisecond. That's the onset uh, how long the stimulus will be on within each trial. Each trial duration is four seconds and the lag before we start our first trial is 12 seconds. That, that's the uh, time between the first scanner trigger and the onset of our first trial. And it's always a good practice to have something like this. Something in between 10 to 20 seconds is good. Uh, but it's definitely better if it's a multiple of TRs. If TR two seconds, you don't want to do 15, you don't want to do 16. So uh, in terms of uh, trial timing, and uh, the popular one is uh, the OPSEC2. I think uh, if you have a program experiment and you have a generate this, uh, it create a file, some, for example, if you run this command, OPSEC2, uh, it supports only Linux and Mac. Unfortunately, it doesn't work for Windows. And it will generate the onset file and a trial type. It, it, the output will be something like this. Will file name, something like that. The, uh, that's the contact of the file. It basically tell you at zero second, you run your left, con left stimulus condition. Next, next one second, no, we don't do any, throw anything. At the three seconds, left again. Skip now is now trial and eight seconds you want to right kind basically that's of uh, if you run this with the correct uh, parameters it will generate something like this. Uh, here we are I'm I'm using a very special sequence so called M sequence uh, in the uh, utilities I include this file it will generate if we run this this function it will generate eighty numbers. Uh, one through three, so like this. So this is a mathematically very well counterbalanced uh, design, but it's not universal. It's only used for very special case. If you could use it, good. If you can't, you use a more general one. Use the op opsec to generate this file, you use that one. So uh, here basically, uh, this is not 80 numbers. Here's the number of seconds I, uh, compute how many, how long our experiment will be. So it's the number of trials times trial duration, plus I'm going to wait 12 seconds at the beginning and plus 12 seconds in the end. That's why I have times two. Once I get this number, if you ask me how long I'm going to return this one, so it won't run the experiment as I show you here. It just tell us how long it, it will last, the experiment will last. So remember, this is a very important for most experiments. Use the randomized seeds. Uh, whenever you want to randomize the sequence, it's critical. Otherwise, all your experiment will use a fixed uh, sequence. That's uh, uh, sometimes it's good, or oftentimes it's a, it could be a disaster. Here, actually, it's not critical. The, the thing is here, I use this only for to randomize this, uh, not randomize, to start with a random place, ra a random place. Like if I start from here, I'm going to put all this to the end. That's a very special property of M sequence. Uh, for example, if I'll do this, then in the end, I go to here, till finish till here. Still 80, trial, 80 numbers, but they, that's a different sequence. You can start from any number. Uh, well, most sequence won't work that way. But M sequence is special, it works that way. So that's why I start from a random point. So make sure I don't start, I don't want to start from one because one is a now trial, it's a not real condition. Okay, and uh, it's pretty simple here. Uh, choose, uh, choose uh, look, you start from here, then uh, first to, the, to that one, put to the end. So it's just, after that, it could be start from here or this part there. Uh, uh, still 80 numbers. Here's some, uh, uh, I'm going to compute the designed onset of each trial. Look, it's a, 
because we, we use a fixed trial duration, it's simply trial duration times zero through n. Oh, actually, it's a good practice. I remember last time. If we use a function, you can use space to set a, a debug point. Then we are going to run this. Uh, uh, we will go to run the experiment. Ah, it won't run. It stops here. Look at that green error. So uh, what we uh, make that small. Uh, as a debug step, we'll run line by line. Look, the green arrow goes line by line. And uh, now we can check, uh, we can check all whatever all error variable we have. And it's uh, uh, 80 because they, this guy has 80, 80 numbers. So if we keep going, keep going, So the design onset, we can check the design onset. That's 80 numbers. It's simply the first one start with a 12, why is 12, 12? Because we add the lag. That's the second since the scanner trigger. So that's what I call, uh, keep uh, repeating use absolute time, that's what it means. We don't want to wait four seconds, start next trial, wait another four seconds, start next trial. That's, that, that's not how we use. We uh, pre-compute every, on, all the onset for each trial. Here is a very special for that. It's just, a, uh, I get all the left or right is, a, uh, uh, okay. Only for uh, the number greater than two because one is, the, fixation trial. And once we do that, we keep running, we com I compute the number again. Now uh, is after we remove one. Uh, here's the uh, logical index. So if we check, that's a logical index, 80 numbers, but uh, I guess 40, 54 of them is true. Yeah, 54 of them true, and that means 26 of them. Uh, 26 of them are ones. So now n uh, should be 54 because uh, we removed, the, we kept only the left, right. That means in the sequence now, uh, we have only two and three, no more, no one anymore because this line we, we kept only, uh, this one kept only uh, two and three. Oh, here's the way I recommend to, uh, you to start use MATLAB table uh, object. So if we do this, uh, let's uh, continue line by line. Okay, now if we check what, uh, what is a T? Oh, T is a 54 by six uh, size table. If we check what's the contact of a table, It's 54 by six. They have a, uh, we, we give those uh, row, uh, column names as a condition, button, correct or not, response type, real onset, design onset. It's just a re uh, initialized table. Conditions are all left, that's not true, but uh, we will update later. So next line, we will put our computer design uh, onset time into the last column. So if we do, yeah, look, it's updated. So this is a good, we will use this table during experiment. And more importantly, this is the result we will say. At the next line, we will change the, uh, uh, those, the conditions, some of them to write if the sequence number is a three. Now it's a two or three, two is left, three is right. So now some are left, some are right. Uh, that's pretty much our, what we need. So the, this kind of thing we will feel when we run a experiment a trial by trial, what's the response, if the response is correct or not. So now the uh, next command is what? Open window. 
Uh, this is a, a my function. I strongly recommend you use it. It's pretty much same as same as what you you may familiar with uh, uh, screen. Uh, it's same as this. Uh, something uh, screen number, and uh, same as this, but it does a lot of extra good thing. One thing is uh, uh, the major advantage is uh, if we have our own on screen window, they won't open another one. Simply use the existing one. This is the background. And here's the critical one. And it returns if the, ah, it's a new one or it's a existing one. If it's a new one, remember this one? On cleanup, that's the line to close the window automatically. Auto close window if, if it's a down or in case of error. So in the end of a code, you don't see anything close window because this line will take care of, take care of that for us. If necessary, if it's an existing window, I didn't open, so I want close. You take care of that. Someone who, whoever close, open, you close it. I don't close it, I just use it. So this just is, if I open, I close it. So here's a, a tricky, you don't have to do this. It's just a, a lazy way to uh, draw, a feel, uh, fig, uh, draw a circle for the fixation because we use the frequently, like, like look here, four usages, because we use four times, I won't bother to type this every time. I just do a short one, shortcut. Okay, uh, this is the screen size. Uh, here's uh, some kind of uh, 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 that other room. In this case, we are going to do a wedge. It, you will see the, uh, the stimulus later. Uh, because I now I'm, I, I will stop here because once I open window, we will see a black window. We won't see anything, my lab things. And for other stimulus, uh, uh, today's one's not that typical. You, you often you print some text. In that case, you will see, you will use this kind of thing in your trial. The draw text, your text, uh, typically is uh, X and Y is often centered. If it's not centered, you will need to compute the, compute the X, y, X and Y coordinate based on the screen size. Uh, here's the color uh, uh, as a RGB or a single one, if it's black, white, or gray. The other popular ones use the pictures. In that case, you will use a MATLAB function to rate the picture. Uh, try your best to use a relative path. Um, uh, I guess I missed one dot. As a current, start from current path if this use this is absolute path, should uh, there there should be a dot uh, fix your fix your uh, uh, demo code. Uh, it should uh, save a my path folder under the current folder and store your pictures. That's the best to organize. You don't have to do that way, but that makes it easier to uh, make it compatible among computers. Then once you load the image, you will do this and. After this, when you do the screen flip, it will show you show the picture. This one is only needed if you want to uh, show your picture at a different place rather than the center of the screen, or you you want to resize your picture, make it a small or larger uh, compared to the original image size. And in case you play movie, uh, you can call this function. Uh, look, here there's no window. This function will automatically find the current window and use it to play. So uh, this also includes in my utility. You, you can simply use movie file from time uh, to time. There are other controls like volume. Typically, you, we don't need to control that. So for the, uh, this part is uh, specifically for this experiment. It will fill the wedge. Keep go uh, compute that. So uh, let's uh, show the stimulus before uh, before I we keep going. I'm going to uh, let uh, do the uh, debug continue. That will keep running, not line by line. Once I do this, we will see a computer screen. Uh, actually, 
let's stop this. Uh, I would do one more change, a little minor change. Still change is similar to a long duration. Because uh, we are doing online, if it's a, such short, you may not see the stimulus at all through Zoom. So now let's run this. Keep that's the black screen. So, and we'll show some, uh, show the uh, instruction. And, uh, do you see the screen? If you don't see uh, the stimulus screen, uh, shout to me. And uh, uh, the instruction is maintain the fixation. You do whatever, uh, whatever instruction you want to give a participant. Now it's waiting for the scanner trigger. If I press a key five, the instruction disappears. That calls the draw fixation, show up a white dot in the center of the screen, and subject you to maintain fixation on the screen after 12 seconds. We show that uh, the wedge on the left side. And another left is kind of random. It's depending on the sequence of two or three. Two is left or three is right. But in our table, uh, remember we saved uh, left or right rather than two or three. It's more uh, user friendly. So that's basically the stimulus. Now you may say, ah, it's so long, it's longer than four seconds. Yeah, because we have a now trial. Now trial is another four seconds. We don't show either left or right. Okay, because our code is designed in such a way uh, while we are developing the code, I can press escape key, it'll simply stop. Okay, so uh, let's just, just a quick question. Um, Go ahead. When I've been um, playing with this code a bit, I notice it takes like a pretty long time to get to that initial like instruction screen. Um, it probably takes like 30 seconds to kind of boot up. Um, I know it might be nuanced and specific to my machine, but I'm curious if there's kind of general troubleshooting um, that you would recommend for a problem like that? Oh, uh, that's typically in, uh, indicating the cycle toolbox was not installed uh, optimally, uh, op in an optimal way. And uh, uh, oftentimes, because the cycle toolbox is designed in very good timing, so uh, that's in the uh, utility included. I include a command window function, CC. Uh, uh, what it does is, uh, a lot of things like this. Uh, uh, it clears everything to start a fresh thing. And it also set up a lot of things, uh, ignore a lot of uh, the video debug level thing. So probably if you run that, it will start quickly. But if it's still not, that means the installation is somehow uh, not correct. Thank you. Okay. Uh, here I'm going to, uh, I'm not uh, going to able to do the uh, thing uh, line by line because it will open the window. We try to avoid that. Uh, something, missed something at the beginning. Uh, selection, run the selection. What? Oh, this line, because it's an inside of function. Uh, that's fine. Let's skip that line, complain. Okay, now we create our table. That's what I want to show you. Uh, that's before we run any trial. So now we open screen, let all the close, and uh, uh, here's the create the wedge. You don't have to do that if you are using picture. Here's the instruction. Uh, make it a, a larger, the default is a pretty small font. Uh, here's the instruction. I can draw text, I'll show that flip. That's a, but for flip, everything is in the buffer you want on the screen. On, only when we do the flip, it shows, shows up on the screen. Here's the, uh, the juicy part. I introduced my project, the KP event class. It's a very long name. You may hate it, but that's fine. No problem, because you don't need to type that long name every time. You can do simply call the keyboard. I want to detect key one, two, and five. One, two are response, five are the scanner trigger. You can call that this anything, but this is your choice. 
So then later you won't use this anymore, you will simply use this. That's why long name doesn't matter, it's just keep the less conflict uh, 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 with others. So if you run this, you will see it will buffer key, these three keys in this, because I'm running on Windows, the keyboard index is zero. If you are running Mac, it will choose on Mac the best keyboard, best guess for you. So if you are running on your laptop, you are testing code, it will run, choose your keyboard. You are, if you are running in a scanner, you will choose the subject keyboard. So you don't need to, uh, you have the option to specify which keyboard at the second input, for example, zero, that's your uh, first keyboard, but you won't bother. I will take care of it for you. That's, uh, I'm so friendly to you. So that's why I recommend this, this is really nice. Here, that's the critical one. Uh, actually, that's not the, uh, I have like kept both. Uh, in this case, it's not a problem. And use the read is actually it's better you use wait. Read is a, a wait for the key five that's scanner trigger forever until there's a five that's a scanner trigger. Same thing for this. The difference between these two is uh, this one is use the buffer the response. This one use the KP check. So uh, here's the. Uh, sh I, I should. A comment differently. This is use a buffered response. In this case, because we just start a buffer and you don't need to clear. This one is not buffered at all because we just started. But uh, if you have something in the middle, you better use this one. So he, this one is not necessary, just, uh, just to do something like uh, uh, you will say something, ah, that's a timestamp. That's a user friendly. Okay, then we are going to, uh, once uh, the scanner press the five, that's a trigger, then we, we will hide, uh, hide cursor, draw fixation, show the fixation, then start our trial loop. Okay, here's the uh, show the trial one by one. So uh, uh, the one thing I emphasize the absolute onset, trial onset. Look, here's the, what's that? That's the timestamp for the key five. That's the, our first scanner trigger. Everything, every timestamp is a relative of that one. Plus this guy, when I is a one, first 12 plus 12. That's the design onset, that's this number. So that's the absolute onset time, our, our trial one. So if the uh, first condition is left, we are going to, present the uh, wedge on the left side. If it's the right, if it's the right, I'm going to take the angle as 180. The angle 180 means I'm going to rotate the wedge the other way by 180 degrees. That's the trick of the cycle toolbox. That here's the rotate angle. Here is the cycle toolbox function. Draw that uh, wedge with uh, either zero or 180 degree rotation and draw a fixation, but now it doesn't show anything. It's just, a, we are drawing in a buffer. Here, th this line is not necessary as the comment says, but allow us to escape from by press. Uh, it's only for our develop code writer, not the, extract, not the subject. So that's the critical part. Screen flip, now it shows both the wedge and the fixation. And it returns the, real onset time assigned to this number. We start with another number. Uh, so now assign the first one. So now because we are using buffered response, we need to clear. That's uh, remove the uh, possible uh, response from previous trial. Draw fixation and only no wedge. Do another flip after the stimulus duration. Look, here's the onset plus duration, that's after stimulus duration, we turn the stimulus off. Subject may have a response during this time, no problem. We won't miss it because we are using the buffer and response. Here's the, uh, the loop I showed you in a, a PowerPoint. Single line, response time, 
and actually not a response time, it's a simply timestamp button. And how many, how long trial duration minus the duration, stimulus duration. Uh, so we, we don't wait, wait till the very end of the trial. We arbitrarily get rid of 100 milliseconds earlier. So uh, we make sure we won't miss the onset of the next trial. That's kind of arbitrary, a little bit shorter, longer, doesn't matter. So here's the optional input for the second input. It's a, we want to detect only button one and two. You could detect one, two, three, four. It's, that's up to you. But the, uh, we could omit this if we don't detect five here. If we remove five, we have no five here, we can't get, we don't need this. But uh, uh, I would uh, recommend do this. So in this way, uh, we will see the advantage later. So they are oh, this ones without uh, input. So here's the, because it's a subject, within four seconds, he may not make a response, we need to escape. If there's an empty, no response, continue. We don't want to do anything, we start next trial. In that case, all of this will be, and, and that means a missed trial. All this was still empty. But if they're typically there's a response, and here's a, uh, if more than one response within that time window, we de you decide which one you need to take. Uh, in this case, I'll take the last one, but you may choose the first one if you think it's, uh, it's uh, makes more sense. So then we will button, they press button one or two in this case, and uh, correct or not, if the left, he press button one, that's correct. Or if the right, seamless, he press button two, that's a correct response. This one will be either zero or one. This one is the, the first one minus the real onset. That's returned by the flight. That's the response time, okay? Then we go back to the next trial. Remember next trial, the onset is uh, the trigger time plus this number, okay? Look, they, there's a four second, there's eight second difference. That means we have a now trial between second trial and third trial. Let's keep going until the end of the experiment. So well, after we finish all the trials, I will wait till the trigger seconds plus the hour duration. That's an extra, there's a, uh, should be an extra 12 seconds. And this is user friendly, it's not, not critical. Then, we turn off the uh, fixation, means we are done. So experiment are done, uh, rest is a critical thing. So we save the result, right? And that's uh, this part. But this part does something extra. This is a great feature implemented in, the, in my tool, in my, where is that? Yeah, this guy. Because of this, we could do this. This one will stop to uh, buffer the response and will, it will return all the timestamp and all the keys, even we cleared, even we cleared, we ignore that. We'll re remember all of that. It, just in case you want to go back to check, it give you a good chance, you can do that. And this part, you can delete them totally, but I, recommend you keep it. So this will only check what are the fives? What are the timing for those fives? I'm, I'm right a code to check any five run timing. If the last time minus first five is the time should be one TR less than this guy. If it's not, I'm going to warn you, oh, something's wrong. Maybe you missed, maybe our code missed the first five. In that case, it will, it will be shorter. You will see a, a warning message like this. Uh, this is optional. It's just simply uh, save a code, copy for your code. Uh, oh, by the way, the real onset, not a real onset, it's, it's actually flip time. After this one minus the, this one is a relative. Then real onset, design onset should be very similar uh, after this. So probably 
all of this after the trial loop for your experiment, probably you don't need to touch anything. And you only need to take care of the, uh, how you show your stimulus trial by trial. So this part, I guess you, you don't need to touch anything. Let me show you uh, one of the uh, response, then we are uh, recorded the response, then we are done. This is one of my response. Uh, ah, that's a fake one. Okay, uh, look here I saved the T. Uh, oh, remember I also assigned the P to the user data of the table. Uh, P store, you, you see a lot of P this. I use the P dot theme in a struct because I can simply assign in one line. So you could keep that way, but you don't have to. So uh, if I do the same thing to get the property, we get the P. That's what I use for the experiment. You can tell, oh, that's June 8th, one o'clock. So here's the, my response, uh, button two, button one. I was a good subject. Look, I did almost 100% correct, right? This is the response time. And uh, you could quickly check the, how is my response time or T. Huh, I uh, have a slow response. Otherwise, it's pretty much around 0.6 seconds, not bad. So the real onset, design onset, they should be the same, but are they the same? Let me uh, check the real onset, tab real onset minus T design onset, tab. Uh, you can see the, there is some error, but the maximum error is about 17 milliseconds. What is that? That's one over 60. That because my screen is uh, uh, 60 hertz. Uh, if you are, think about it, it's easy to understand this pen. Uh, even as uh, some, it's below 100 second, milliseconds, I'm not too worried about that. They, actually, this is a perfect. It's a, within a, a screen fresh. Okay. So uh, I think that's uh, pretty much it. So if you have an experiment, you should start with this and enjoy my, enjoy my function, the, uh, the powerful keyboard response function. And I think that's pretty much it. Uh, any questions? Thank you. Yeah, uh, feel free to unmute and uh, uh, any questions are welcome. Oh. No question? <laughs> This is not a question, but just a quick note. Um, some astute observers in the audience noticed that the lecture from last week hasn't yet been posted on our YouTube. So I just sent a link to the chat um, that contains that um, and it will be uploaded shortly. Oh, actually, uh, there's one thing that I need to uh, show you quickly. I think I just, oh, script. So uh, this is only for one run. If we have multiple runs, uh, we will do a script. That's a rare script should be very rare. Uh, this I, I just write, for example, my subject ID is one, two, three, four IP. That's we, uh, we are going to have a three runs. Here, open the window. This guy is open the window. Then uh, we are going to show you, uh, for example, let, let me run this. You will see what it looks like. So run through one of the three, press uh, space bar to continue, I'll press space bar. Now it calls the uh, domain function. Uh, once I press space bar, uh, space bar to continue, and we'll wait for space bar. That's the function I mentioned. 
wait for space bar. And then call the function. The function that the, uh, the input for the name is the file name to save. That's a behave subject plus round one or round two or round three. Look, here I use try catch rather than uh, because of the script, uh, we have to use try catch. The on clean that works only for function. So if there's an error, like I, I press the escape, that actually that act as an error. Uh, you will see where is the, yeah, uh, you, uh, error, user press escape. So that's an error. Then it will display the error and goes here to close, to close screen by itself. So here, this guy won't open screen. It will use the screen open here. Uh, uh, let me paste it because I didn't give you this file. I'll paste this to the, the, to the chat. Oops. What I did. I guess I did something accidentally. Chat. Yeah. Huh? Is there? Oh, yeah. Okay. It's very simple. If you'd like to as well, um, send me that um, that end file. I can send it out to the list as well. Okay. Anyone missed it. Okay. Yeah, you could write write your own, but just uh, 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 oh, actually this uh, cut uh, this one's a good nice thing. So you oh, you only open one window. You never close it uh, between runs. It look more professional to participant. If you keep uh, you could here where. To, uh, like a, uh, something, uh, one, two, three, four, A, B, uh, round one, you could do this, but participants were looking at, ah, it doesn't look too professional, right? <laughs> if you use this, it will also reduce the human error. You don't type, it will give the file name automatically for you. That's a subject plus a round number. Oh, also, uh, this is necessary. Because if this guy doesn't open a window, remember only this guy opens window, it closes it. If, because here you uh, exist window, it won't close it even there's an error. That's why we need to use the catch here. If the error, display me the error and uh, close it. Okay, uh, uh, no question? That means that you are all expert. No question. <laughs> well, if there isn't anything else, um, would you like to just uh, briefly um, chat about what we'll cover next week? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Thank you. So next week is a totally different topic. It's about uh, uh, NFT format. And that's uh, one of the most popular, popular uh, imaging analysis format. And except, I think, except a brain voyager, every other tool uh, packages use the NFT format. So the major, uh, again, I'm not going to uh, talk the NFT systematically. Like this one, I pre pre provide you a demo code so you are not scared about coding. Next one, what well, my, my emphasize will be well, what if we uh, want to do some uh, custom, custom, customized analysis? Because if a traditional analysis is all included in the packages, we don't need to worry about. If we don't know NFT format, not a problem. But when we want to do some customized analysis, for example, our analysis or machine learning special algorithm, then we would need to load the images by ourselves or extract some uh, time series within a certain ROA. My emphasis will be, what could be wrong if we are doing that by ourselves? So we need to know a little bit about NFT format, not much, but a couple of uh, things can go easily wrong. So in that case, we need to pay special uh, attention so uh, we can avoid those mistakes. Uh, specifically one thing is uh, left or right, because our brain left or right is kind of symmetric. If you mess up, 
uh, left, right is not easy to tell. I, we know we are sure we won't mess up front, back, right? So, but left, right is uh, due to historical reason of the Nifty format. Uh, Nifty is pretty good, won't mess up. But because of historical reason, uh, there's a good chance to mess up left, right. And uh, also show some uh, uh, powerful thing in MATLAB. So remember, I, I last time showed you how to uh, compute the correlations. So easy. Next time, I'm, I'll show you uh, uh, the general linear model, how to uh, quickly get a T-map for that. Anything else? I think that's everything on my end. Um, well, I look forward to seeing everyone next week. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Jean-Gris.